you're all well and looking forward to going back to school on Monday. Finally, we've got the permission to go back. I'm feeling great about that. I don't know about you. It's just going to be so good having everybody back together in school. So we are carrying on with our Miracles of Jesus and we're coming to a really big one today. It's how Jesus is, raises Lazarus from the dead. Uh, don't get much bigger miracles than that. Um, and it's a famous story. You probably know it really, really well. just want to bring out a few things that I think might be really interesting for us. Now, the Bible goes into lots of detail on this. And I've got here in John's Gospel, and the whole chapter is taken up with uh, the um, Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. So pretty important. I think the two big things that have been affecting us from the beginning of time and they're very interrelated is when Adam and Eve sinned, God said sin is going to bring death. And Jesus is now going to die for our sins. And just before he does that, he raises Lazarus from the dead and he's and he himself is going to be raised from the dead. So Jesus is totally conquering the two biggest problems of our human existence, sin and death. Now, but there are some really quite strange details in this story. So Lazarus gets ill, Mary and Martha do what all Christians would do, take the problem to Jesus. And so they, she sent, they send a messenger to Jesus and go, Jesus, your good friend Lazarus is really ill and will probably die and if you don't come and heal him. And everybody expects that Jesus is going to actually drop everything and go and heal Lazarus. He's his really good friend and he doesn't. And the disciples say, well, why are we still here? He says, Actually, this is so because God's purposes are bigger than me going now. And I think that's really interesting for us. I think as soon as we become people of prayer, and I hope you are becoming somebody that routinely takes your problems and other people's problems to God, we have the issue of what happens when we don't get the response that we're expecting. And I think this principle comes through all of our attitudes to prayer. Jesus wants us, God wants us to know that he loves us and he just wants us to trust him with all our needs. Uh, but he wants us to leave it in his hands because sometimes he's not going to answer the way that we want him to because he's got bigger purposes. And this turned out to be right. He says the same to, you know, when he actually gets there um, his sisters say, well, Jesus, if you'd have come sooner, he wouldn't have died. And Jesus says, no, my purposes are bigger. And they are totally relaxed in that. You can see that they've learned to become really good friends of Jesus and they understand who he is. And as we understand, understand him and the kind of person that he is, we know that he's never going to do anything to harm us. He's never going to do anything to cause us distress. He's just going to give us his blessings, but he's going to do it his way, which is better than our ways anyway. The other thing is, there's a really lovely little bit in this passage, and Ben's dad is called Thomas. And the Thomases of this world have got a really bad press because... Thomas is the one that after Jesus um, is raised from the dead, says, I will only believe if I can put my finger in his hands and his feet. Um, but this is Thomas being so brave because the disciples truly felt that if Jesus was going to do this, um, he was going to be killed. And Thomas turns to the rest and they go, come on, guys, let's go with him. If we die, we die. Um, but at least we'll die with Jesus and really brave things. So you know what? Sometimes we don't, it's really nice to get into these little details of the disciples that are around him. And 
Yeah, his disciples, the disciples were going to run away when Jesus was crucified, but they, they did have their moments of bravery too. And Thomas just really loved the Lord so much he was willing to do that. The other thing is that I think is really interested in interesting in this passage is that when Jesus comes to Mary and Martha, um, he weeps that Lazarus has had to die. And Jesus knows that he's going to raise him from the dead, but he just has this very human moment, and it's the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. He just cried. And I think sometimes when we're, we're thinking about Jesus, the person that does these fantastic miracles, he's also very human. He also does it just because he loves people, just because he loves us. Um, and he just truly, and the people themselves said, look how much Jesus loved him. Nearly stopped there, just to say that at this point, things are getting a lot hotter for Jesus. After this, a lot of people learn about this miracle and they put their trust in Jesus. They're pretty fickle though, because a few days later they're saying crucify him. Um, but the, the Sanhedrin, the Jews at this point decide that Jesus is becoming too popular and they decide to put him to death. Um, and this is like a crisis point in Jesus's ministry. But behind it is just Jesus being a lovely friend, Jesus being a wise, um, like a wise father God, a wise person that knows that he's got bigger purposes and Jesus also being all powerful God that can raise people from the dead. Anyway, we'll chat a little bit later on Zoom. I hope that helps you. Have a really great week. And just remember, let's become people of prayer. Let's become people that in, in our growing knowledge of God, we're relaxed in bringing things to him and just letting him deal with things in his way. Love you all, see you later. Bye.